So Beyond Borders is a strategic partnership of national agencies and the regional Salto centers, which um, addresses a particular dimension of the European youth programs, the Erasmus Plus program and the European Solidarity Corps in the youth field, um, namely the cooperation between program countries and uh, neighboring partner countries inside these programs. There is on the one hand a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of interest from organizations to engage in this cooperation and to use the programs as tools for that, um, but also that there are some challenges connected to it. And um, with this project, Beyond Borders, the strategic partnership, um, we are trying to address these challenges that we have identified. So for instance, um, one of the issues is certainly um, that it's difficult often to find partners for cooperation projects. So this is something that we're trying to address very practically um, by offering partner finding activities. We have also seen that um, the program structure as it exists and the opportunities that are provided um, have certain limitations. Um, so we're also trying to do some advocacy work to address these issues towards the, those stakeholders in the institutions that can um, that take the decisions. Um, and this is particularly something that we're doing with this event now, this conference, um, where we have brought together um, organizations, um, but also other stakeholders from, I think, 33 countries um, from this broad, broad geographical context in order to draft recommendations towards um, the programs, how the programs should develop further in the future, um, but also for support activities that could help and facilitate and support um, the development of quality projects and partnerships. The, this meeting is, uh, highlights the values of the partnership between neighboring and program countries. And uh, it's built in a way that uh, we are uh, able to, uh, to give our recommendations, to evaluate what works and how did it work and what has to be improved. Challenges, of course, there's many nowadays, uh, especially like taking into account uh, what is happening in Ukraine, this uh, Russian aggression, uh, the geopolitical situation in many regions, like many in many countries we are coming from. And uh, in this moment, it's very crucial to even continue and maintain the partnership. So even like try to engage more organizations, grassroots organizations, to reach out to young people in rural areas and really promote these democratic values and EU values, which is like participation, democracy, human rights, equality. Again, it's important to have a grassroots organizations to, in order to make sure that there's a inclusion and the reach out of this, uh, those who are living in rural areas. The three takeaways I would want to share today are probably resilience, anxiety and optimism. The resilience one is about the amazing energy there is, especially on the part of youth organizations and young people in partner countries to resist and oppose any challenges or issues along the way, to persevere, to continue working, whatever the local, or regional or global circumstances. And we know that the recent years have not been kind with many countries in the region, If you, whether you mentioned the situation in Palestine or in Ukraine or what's happening in Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, it's been a lot of um, developments on the ground that prevented youth organizations from doing the work that they had planned. The second one is anxiety, and I think it's palpable in the room, or as palpable we are, the future of the Erasmus Plus program at large is stable in a way that Erasmus Plus program will survive and most probably tr thrive in most areas, but cooperation with partner countries does not seem to be a priority uh, in the bigger picture and it's not a priority in, the, in budgetary terms and programming terms and policy terms and there is quite a lot of anxiety and quite a lot of questioning of the current framework or to what extent it's suitable to the needs of young people in the region to what extent it's a priority for the program at large and hence the third point is optimism about the possibility to change things so the possibility to feedback the key points from young people in the region, from youth organizations, in order to change and adapt the program to what they need. And I think the big headline for what is it that is needed is that there is a lot of appetite for more. There are also some new ideas for new forms and formats of programming and new and new themes that should be tackled. I think there is a quite a widespread realization that democracy isn't doing very well, neither in the EU nor in partner countries, uh, that young people are very much affected in the middle of this, uh, whether it's shrinking spaces for civil society or just pure opportunities in the education or labor market or restricted voting rights. There is uh, 
quite a lot of focus on democracy, civic rights, civic education, making sure that young people are conscious and active citizens. And the same goes for the world of Erasmus Plus and the world of policy making, to making sure that young people have the proverbial seat at the table, but also that it's a, it's a seat that is equal or on par with that of other guests, that is not some sort of a junior table, that young people's voices are genuinely heard and that they can then see their ideas, their enthusiasm and their feedback reflected in the program cycle. They just they don't just want to be listened to, they want to be heard and then they would like to recognize themselves in the programs and the opportunities that they're then being offered. What we have planned already, two partner finding activities that will be implemented in the spring of next year, one on volunteering and one on Erasmus Plus projects, so youth exchanges and mobilities of youth workers. Um, we have also planned um, a meeting with national agency staff colleagues in order to inform them and give them the opportunity to address any doubts or questions um, they might have in order to support the cooperation better. Um, and projects and uh, project applications. Um, and we are also planning a training course actually for mentors in volunteering that will be hosted in the South Med region in November. And last but not least, we have also um, a workshop planned to develop practical tools um, that we can use in activities um, in the framework of this cooperation. There were quite a few conclusions and recommendations from Bonn events. So there is a need for among both youth organizations and young people across the the various um, partner countries and partner regions, whether it be Mediterranean, Western Balkans or um, Eastern Partnership, to provide more opportunities to young people. So whether it's about more mobilities, more youth exchange opportunities, more youth worker training or the more strategic and larger scale capacity building projects, there is a universal need um, for more opportunities to be provided. So the concern is how do we make sure that member states, young people, youth organizations, stakeholders in the EU hear us, understand us and embrace this difference that comes with cooperation with partner countries. Why it's important and what benefits, how the program countries can, can benefit from this is that having a um, strong democratic country um, along the EU it's, I think, the main interest of, uh, of, of, of um, all of us. So um, this is a mutual beneficial cooperation. We are, both parties are benefiting uh, through this uh, developing the cooperation and the uh, joint projects. So there's a more need of uh, having a synergies between the organizations because there's uh, so many things we can learn from the organizations here in program countries and vice versa. So um, it's equally beneficial, I think, for all of us. So let it rock the partnership uh, with, uh, with, with the regions.